I'll start, sir. Uh, we'll start today's market talk. Equities will ebb and flow with every twist and turn in the signals from the Fed. Simple. And now this year, this is what is going to be the one which will impact the outlook on equities because they would be the number one driver of equity prices this year, even more than the equity uh, or the corporate earnings. Okay. The setup, as I see it, uh, there are return of doubts on whether the best of all the world scenario, the markets are looking forward to this year is for real. So what are markets pricing in? Markets are, were pricing in a soft landing for global economy, a pivot on rate cuts, a halt to quantitative tightening by central banks. That means they will issue more liquidity, no impact of geopolitical tensions on economy and markets, no impact of turn, uh, of turn towards protectionism, deglobalization and reconfiguring of supply chains, no impact of climate change on the economy and markets, no impact of slowdown in China, and no impact of massive overhang of national debts. It is very difficult for all this optimism to come true. And now you can add one more issue, which is uh, uh, no return of Trump, because if Trump comes, it will be negative for all these green economy stocks and all that. So that is the issue. Healthy corporate earnings will be key to sustaining present levels and any disappointment with corporate results will be brutally dealt with by investors as seen with HDFC Bank and L LTI Mindtree stocks uh, this last week. Now, talking about HDFC Bank, merger does not permanently affect HDFC Bank's earning potential and its trading at the low end of its valuation band. Let's talk about HDFC Bank. It's a market leader, pristine asset quality and low valuations. Profit ca growth came down due to contraction in margins. Names which used to be around 4% plus, came down to 3.4%. But if you see the sum of the parts valuation, it will come to around 1900 for all its subsidiary. So if you take that part, it is at 1.9 times FY25 expected price to book. Concern is on sustainability of business growth on bigger balance sheet and profitability amid rising regulatory costs and margin decline. But they did 4.9% loan growth in Q3. So that would be reaching around 20% annually, which is okay. So if they do this 20% annually loan growth, they will double their balance sheet in three to four years. The concern was on deposit growth, which was just 1.9%. As uh, But they want to tackle it with branch expansion. And uh, the concern is that only that in case they have to get deposits, they have to offer higher uh, deposit rates. So if they have to hire depo uh, give higher deposit rates, then the NIMS will contract. But NIMS will remain lower as the loan book has shifted to mortgages that earn lower spread as compared to retail lending. And uh, they are also over a period of time replacing HDFCs, banks, HDFCs borrowing with bank deposits. If you remember, HDFC, the housing finance used to always give higher uh, interest rate on deposits as compared to bank. So they will have to replace that. That will take some time, uh, which will improve margins. Still, ROA is at 2% and ROE is at 16%. So the at present valuation closer to 1450 to 1460 risk reward is favorable. Now, tepid growth in consumption should be reflected in the valuations of consumer good companies. Uh, as brought out by NSO, the private consumption growth in FI24 is projected to be 4.4%. So, in this upcoming interim budget or subsequently, government may have to push for consumption or push to uh, give a push to consumption in the interim budget because more robust consumption economy will give confidence to private sector to invest because presently the economic growth is due to the investments and the capex related uh, spending which is done by the government is not related to private consumption we have seen with the results of asian paints hul two wheelers entry level car sales qsrs all have reported slowdown in the growth so either the government has to uh, do a gst cut 
or income tax rate cut or some uh, stops for consumption because uh, you cannot have poor consumption for a longer time and now you will start also seeing when the white good companies start coming up with the, their results as to what is the impact on this uh, despite the 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 last quarter which was a festival uh, quarter right now the growth in india is because of capex and not because of consumption so it has to shift to consumption from capex now tata consumer products announced the acquisition of two companies capital foods and organic india uh, acquisition will lead to increase in addressable market size acquisition of capital foods and organic india capital food owns chinks secret and smith and jones so which one is desi chinese chutney blended masalas sauce to soups and smith and jones is caters to italian and other western cuisines organic india is into herbal and traditional supplements tea and infusions organic packaged foods these acquisitions will enhance growth and ebitda margins because they have been acquired at the lower ev to ebitda as to what the tata consumer products trade trades at but it it is still trading at a uh, expensive valuation it is at pe of 65 for fy25 earnings so we'll have to see what is the overall result before taking a plunge into this stock In my opinion it's a expensive stock ramakrishna forgings is adding new products and exploring new markets for growth the it's a forging company so year on year tonnage growth of uh, 24.5% uh, has been driven by increase in content per vehicle they did a 20% increase in revenue ebitda margins improved by 88 basis points CV industry will sustain positive in uh, momentum now that is commercial vehicles because of increase in uh, infrastructure spending and uh, movement of goods etc in the country international market outlook is also improving with easing supply side constraints so their european and us business will also likely to do well uh, they are targeting three wheelers and uh, personal vehicles in ev segment they are also into railways like uh, last time we had discussed they have a contract with uh, titagar uh, railways acquiring they have acquired uh, acil which uh, which uh, which is into production of high precision engineering automotive components it will it will help them to enter tractors and personal vehicles uh, stock has gone up 3x in last one year so it's presently expensive but you have to keep it in on your radar and buy it on dips uh, ltts has retained the fy24 constant currency revenue growth guidance of 17.5% to 18.5% implying a sequential constant currency growth between 4 to 7% in the fourth quarter they did 1.5% revenue growth sequentially ebit margins at 17.2% they won six large deals the medical devices segment grew 2.4% q and q demand driven by strong cycle in transportation software defined vehicles plant engineering and industrial segment so it's a pure play erd business which is expected to do because of the niche quality of the business stock is presently at pe of 38 to 30 uh, 32 times fy25 fy26 earning generally they have been uh, trading at a forward pe of 25 so if you see the fy25 likely eps of around 145 to 50 uh, this stock is expensive uh, and eps cagr not more than 15% is expected so it is presently at around a pg that is pe to growth of around 2 which is pretty expensive so again you can't enter these stocks at these valuations though even if their performance is relatively better than rest of them uh okay let's talk about uh, certain technicals us 10 year yield so if you see because of uh, once there was a uh, this narrative on early rate cuts the yields contracted came to around 3.8 but now as this uh, narrative is receding in the background and people are talking about nothing before june a uh, rate cut possible rate cut so the yields have gone up now and uh, they have gone to around 4.1 plus and cross the uh, 20 and 50 uh, day moving averages so we'll have to see from here where they go because 
as the as the yields go up uh, the cost of money goes up and it is negative for the equities uh, brent crude uh, it's uh, declining it's below its 20 and 50 ema and it is despite all the tensions in all parts of the world uh, it has not moved basically because of oversupply and lesser demand expectation so this is a declining trend line and it has not been able to cross that and i personally feel this 70 odd level should be that crucial level because it takes supports uh, support here regularly so this is one thing to be looked at uh, dollar index now if the the rate cuts are not happening and the us currency is strengthening so the last week the dollar index went up it is now uh, closer to the 50 ema and uh, once it goes up from here uh that will be negative for basically all the metals and commodities and if the dollar index goes up then it will be negative for gold also now here if you see it took support at 200 ema and then went up from there so let's see from till what all levels it can go to uh gold uh, it had a uh, decline last week it is testing its 20 ema on the weekly charts but generally it doesn't crosses this 20 70 or levels hence uh, this is where it becomes expensive so we'll have to see from here it is right now in that consolidation zone because they are trying to see what is the rate cut trajectory right now uh though we are talking about yields going up but s&p 500 uh, made a lifetime high and uh, it crossed that level so uh, it went to i think 4842 that was the high which was they made it on friday and uh, it is trading above that and this is basically because uh, it's a tech tech driven rally in the us and the same thing happened with nasdaq also it again broke its uh, lifetime high so again uh, they are doing well on uh, on the tech driven and the semiconductor based uh, rally India's 10-year yield uh, was uh, green or went up last week, but it will decline based on the uh, narrative which uh, which happens with rate cuts. Though in this Davos thing, the RBI governor said that they are not likely to reduce the rates very quickly. Hence, uh, the yields would have gone up. But in case the uh, Indian bonds get included in the in the various uh, bond indices of the world. then uh, as more money comes in the yields will go down uh, okay let's t- see nifty uh, last week it had a uh, red candle this is a, a bearish engulfing candle what means but what it means is that if it encompasses the last week's uh, uh, green candle by red candle so this is a negative sign and uh, in my view as the now the euphoria is over and the uh, next week the funds and the fi's come in i think we should see some uh, correction right now and uh, this week's uh, this week's correction this week we hit a all time high on monday so uh, we had hit there we crossed that 22000 level and after that uh, on uh, wednesday we had the dip because of because of the hdfc bank results and then the balance results so right now we are generally poised at the 20 ema uh, right now so we close exactly at that level so this is a kind of uh, wait and watch right now they are trying to assess where it goes uh, the first swing low was broken so in my opinion the second swing low uh of these last two swings uh of around 21000 should be should be providing a decent support uh and or uh, the second swing low also is closer to that 50 ema of 21558 so these should be the likely levels in case the 20 ema breaks uh this is the nifty 1 hour chart so if you see the 40 hr uh, moving average has been broken so if it breaks this then it becomes kind of a, a bearish trend and 
if you see the uh, retracement of the last fall which took place from the high it made on monday to the low on uh, which was made on 18th now uh, it has retraced only around 38% and it faced resistance at 50% retracement which was 21700 so in short term uh, this in case it retraces then 21700 and 61.8% retracement 21806 should be the first target so the any strength in the nifty would be only there in case this 21806 is crossed otherwise this will remain vulnerable to sell off so just be wary of this issue now if you see this is the options data this options are the ones which will determine the uh, equity markets so if you see there are few interesting things which come out here first is put writing if you see maximum is at 21000 and then at 21500 and call writing is at 21700 and 22000 the other point is at the money 21600 the total open interest is roughly 260 rupees so uh, if 260 rupees is the open interest that means that Uh, right now they are th those who have taken this straddle here they are safe 250 points both up and down so that should be the basic range 21350 to 21850 for the next week this is what these people are playing at and in case it remains within this range these guys will make this uh, easy money to be made or in case the, there is not much of movement because of high premiums this is 2 260 rupees is the total premium now if we see the put call ratio the puts are lower and calls are higher so roughly 18.5 lakh puts are written and 25.2 lakh calls are written so which indicates a put call ratio of around 0.7 which is uh, bearish that means more people are negative on the market and uh, it becomes oversold if it goes to around 0.6 around 0.6 so more calls have to be written right now it is in right now kind of a no trade zone uh reliance uh, this has had a uh, breakout and it went above the 20 ema tested that somewhere close to 2800 levels but then has corrected results were uh, in between nothing great about it but it didn't correct too much so that should be positive watch out for this 20 EMA for uh, levels for reliance for as a first level of support and 2550 but this is a good stock to accumulate because uh, you see their retail performance was very good uh, uh, this quarter and geo and uh, otc o2c was uh, normal uh, nifty bank you see the weekly chart it had a, a very uh, negative week and it has come to on the weekly charts come closer to 20 ema which is uh, 45760 levels and in case it goes down which seems now unlikely after the icici bank results then 50 ema would have been the next target at 44125 uh, if you see the daily charts it has broken there is a gap down it was had a gap down and now it is on the daily charts it is taking support at the 100 ema at 45713 and there it has been uh, taking support now and i think they were considering the results of uh, icici bank and kotak bank and all and because of the kotak bank results uh, and slightly from icici bank it moved up on saturday but uh, hdfc bank was also slightly positive but it remains a big overhang right now now hdfc bank we have discussed it fundamentally technically it has on the weekly charts uh, it has made a very big uh, red candle so it will remain negative it will not improve in next week or so but in my opinion if you see here on the weekly charts it doesn't crosses this 200 ema even in the worst of times in 22 it took support here so i would be buyer uh, at around 10 20, 20 rupees below this start getting into it and accumulating this at around 14 40 odd levels Uh, nothing much to lose from here icici bank uh, it it is at on the weekly chart it has remained above the 
above the 20 EMA and uh, the it may test the upper trend line which is around one th uh, 1050 odd levels and there the selling comes in generally so let's see what is the reaction to the results results were normal uh, not bad but uh, not that great also uh, the SU banks uh, this is where the momentum is and the results are good so if you see uh, this is a weekly chart on a weekly chart it had a breakout now it was tending to break out and now last week was a clear breakout now it's well clear of this and this is the one where the strength is and it is reflected in the results also they are the ones who are coming up with outstanding results uh, the best result which came out with more than 50 percent growth in profits was in union bank and if you see from these levels uh, on september october of uh, 30 40 odd rupees it has gone up and now it is testing 140 rupees so that is clear 100 rupees uh, uh, growth and this is uh, somewhere close to a uh, one time book so basically uh, we must look at stocks which are closer to one time book right now because there the value is there otherwise things are very expensive pse index again continues to grow and uh, it had a solid week led by railway stocks so this is the one where there is momentum and there is uh, interest of investors and all. So it made a new high uh, last week. So one of the stock which has now made a new high and is Coal India. So it, it consolidated here, took support. If you see on daily charts, it took support to at the 20 EMA and then bounced from there. This is the basic trend of uh, these stocks. They will go up and then they will the selling will come they will take support at 20 ma and then one day they will shoot up so let's see where it goes uh, uh, in this uh, momentum which is there results are expected to be good and they are direct proxy to all the power sector uh, requirements and all that now the the kutub minar was made in rvnl uh, this is the one uh, stock uh, this is a weekly chart so if you see in last week, it has gone from nearly 200 to 300. That's 100 bucks. That is roughly 40% of the gains of the total gains in last one week only. So and the best part was that uh, firstly, I didn't find any research report on this. Nobody is tracking this stock. The second is uh, now as the market caps go up, they will be started. I think mutual funds have also started buying them. Hence, there is a lot of interest. Plus, if this, uh, if you see all the contracts which uh, are generally allotted, are goes to go to RVNL only. Hence, uh, there would be a clear beneficiary. Uh, well, uh, we got this stock at around I think fifty rupees or sixty rupees last year, and uh, I think around this time we got this stock, and from there it has become six x. So just hold on to this. Uh, let's see where it goes. Right now, nobody is selling. Now, IT index, uh, it had a negative week. That is basically because of LTIM and weakness in other stocks. But uh, this is an uptrend. And I think over a period of time, it should test its uh, uh, all-time high and go to 39,500 odd levels. Because now it is uh, cross that 78.6 retracement zone. And then it went, but then uh, retraced back. So let's see from here. And the key uh, participants are Infosys. This is, it had, a, I had brought it out earlier also. This is a symmetrical triangle breakout it had. Now it is well clear of that. And now trading to 1650. So if there is some more better uh, news and other issues, they will, it will start testing that previous highs and all that. Right now they, uh, they are uh, providing some momentum. TCS, uh, it's an interesting chart. So if you see TCS for the last two plus years, it has remained within this range. It keeps giving dividend, keeps doing buybacks and all that. But it remains uh, in this range of 2900 on the lower side and 4000 odd on the upper side. So this has remained within this range. And I think if this on this rally, it will again reverse back from there. Tests, tests its 20 oblique 50 EMA and then uh, will bounce back. Uh, depends on the 
what is the outlook but there is nothing uh, great about it you are getting nothing it is just giving you uh, safe uh, dividend returns and buyback returns and all those issues a uh, mid cap index uh, was very positive last week it had a green candle so it is made again a new uh, lifetime high and i think uh, this is basically driven by all the psu stocks only uh, the small cap index corrected i think there is some profit booking which is taking place here uh, last week and uh, it had a uh, red candle so it went down but then uh, all the selling has got absorbed so it has made a kind of a hammer so which indicates basically a change in trend now so maybe next week the small caps and mid caps should do better uh, now i just take an example of one of the defense stocks this is bharat dynamics uh, interestingly on 26th of or uh, 24th of october it made a low of around 900 where i told people to buy it and uh, it has now gone above 1800 so that is uh, three months it has doubled now the people will be watching for the results and that's why it is consolidating here because generally the execution is bad though there are very high expectations of this so the chances of uh, uh, in case the results are not as per expectation the corrections are also pretty high now we i will discuss uh, uh, three stocks today uh, why i am take why i have taken south indian bank is because i am looking for banks which are trading below the uh, one time book second is i am looking at banks where there is a management change and those which are restructuring the businesses and those who are reducing their uh, past problems and now uh, they are on that upward slope hence the chances for making good money on them is very high because if you see icici bank hdfc bank indusind bank etc everybody owns them axis bank everybody owns them so they are over owned hence that's why i selected this bank now south indian bank came out with strong q3 set of figures net interest income uh, pre provision operating profit profit after tax were above estimate due to higher treasury income and lower provisions asset quality improved across segments with stress from legacy book recognized and focus now shifting to profitability slippages are at around 267 crore which is 1.5% of the loan book which is multi quarter low and better than as expected stable margin moderating operating expenses and modest provisioning expect the return on assets to stabilize near 1% and nims to stabilize near 3.3% with a most modest slippage uh, run rate credit cost is expected to be modest so if the credit cost is less then nims will be better now if you see the south indian bank the this quarter results so this is the q2 fi 23 and this is q3 fi 24 so the interest income has been steadily growing now expenses though are also there net interest income is uh, grow on the growth part year on growth though last quarter was negative uh, non interest income was up hence the total income went up year on growth around 60% operating expenses will rise so pre provisioning operating profits are uh, increasing year on growth now if you see here pre provisioning operating profit year on year growth is roughly 137% q3 fy23 there were 2000 or uh, 200 crore so this is millions so they were 203 million and now they are uh, 3, 203 crores and now they are 483 483 crores uh and pat from 102 crore has gone to 305 crore so that is a growth of 197% uh now let's see their total uh, thing so this year they are expected to do around uh, 3296 crore of net interest income and pat is expected to be for this year around uh, 1063 crores so that is roughly 33% uh, is the basic profit margins uh, names are expected to improve so if you see over fy25 fy26 names are expected to improve eps is also expected to go up now if you see 
FY24 EPS is expected to be five bucks. This stock is at thirty rupees right now. Uh, ROA is improving. ROA is expected to improve, so they, they will reach around one, which is what they are targeting at. Advances are growing. GNPA is that is the gross net performing assets is reducing. Uh, P is also reducing now because uh, the earnings are improving and price to book is below one right now, point nine. Adjusted price to book is around one, so it is uh, not very expensive. Now, if you see the ratio analysis again, names uh, three plus now, uh, just uh, so that is they are on an improvement path from two point six onwards. Uh, provision coverage has improved. To 68 and going to be 70 percent now. Uh, cost to income is also uh, going down, which is good. Other income is uh, as a ratio to total income is improving. So they are getting into other uh, things also. Credit deposit ratio, which was in news recently, is uh, decent. So it is not they are not under pressure in terms of uh, deposits of credit. NPS are going down. Book value is. Somewhere around 36 or 37, and 42 expected for FY25. Uh, ROE is improving. ROA is improving. So that's good. Now, if you see asset quality, this is interesting. Uh, GNPs, if you see, have uh, gone down. So the closing balance of GNPA is reducing, and GNPA percentage to Total deposit, uh, total uh, advances or lending is going down now. It's around 4.7, expected to be 4.7 percent now. Uh, gross slippage ratio has also come down. So every quarter they are adding to less bad loans. If you see the slippages, they are going down now. Uh, break up of advances, if you see, so for Q3 FI24, corporate is around 38 percent, retail is around 23, agri is 19, and MSME is around 20. So it is. Roughly balanced right now. Uh, so the if you see the gist is slippages have reduced, uh, led by reduction in retail and SME uh, bad loans. Q3 net profit I showed you is 305 odd crores, jump of 197 percent year on year. GNPA and NNPA improved. Uh, loan book is improving 36 percent year on year, and they are also getting they've gone into gold loans. So gold loans also improved. 18% year on year. Now, if you see the uh, charts of South Indian Bank, it was in distress uh, earlier. Now the performance has improved. After the result, the stock shot up. And now uh, it has come to around 30. So if it comes down from here, this is a daily chart. So if it comes down from here, uh, it will be a very attractive buy if you can just uh, hold it for some time because uh, there's a lot of... Uh, value here if you compare it to the uh, performance of other banks and the and the uh, and the valuation this is trading at below price to book of one uh, idfc first is at two plus and all other banks are also at more than two price to book so this is at 50 percent and this is below the price to book of most of the psu banks also right now the other interesting thing uh, other interesting stock is landmark cars uh, Landmark Cars has established itself in the premium segment with presence in nine states and is a prominent partner to OEMs like Mercedes, Benz, Volkswagen, BYD, Jeep, Renault, Honda, MG Motors, and Ashok Leland. Uh, company has an asset light model, so it owns only two of the 117 outlets, and 25% of its outlets are acquired. So there is no that fixed cost which it has to take for running outlets. Uh, management's target is to grow its pre-owned car segment with focus on existing brands should aid in leveraging existing network. It, the major source of revenue is after sales revenue, uh, after sales service. It should continue to act like annuity business with provide consistent cash flows because the guys who are buying luxury cars are not really bothered about after sales uh, uh, service and all those issues and cost. Now, China's advancement in making uh, luxury EV vehicles. So, uh, Landmark Cars has tied up with BYD to sell luxury EV cars. It has also started uh, with 
MG Motors in three locations, Indore, Bhopal, and Goa, and has a LOI letter of interest for Ahmedabad, owing to MG Motors EV portfolio for premium segment also. Now, if you see here, uh, this is FI23. So if you see the sales, this is in millions of rupees. So the sales are roughly 3,382 crores. So they are improving every year. EBITDA is also improving. Margins are improving. Uh, profit after tax is improving. And now it is uh, clear positive. It used to be a loss in FI20. EPS is expected to be around 20. Uh, PPS was 21 in FI23. Uh, growth is there now. Earlier the growth was big, but now it is coming to around 20%. They are dividend paying stock. ROE is improving. Uh, they did a ROP, ROE as compared to FI22 as uh, for FI23 is lower because they did a IPO. Hence, the there was an equity dilution. So the ROE has gone down. ROC is improving. Uh, EV2 sales, EV EBITDA is good. PE is around 25 times for FI23. And this was the price to book. This was there. Uh, if you see after sales revenue, this is in million. So roughly 745 crores for FI23. So 20% 20, 20 CHR for uh, FI14 to FI23 with 18% EBITDA margins. This is for after sales revenue. This is number of uh, outlets. Now, if you see, they've increased their number of outlets to around 117 now uh, by H1 FY24. Uh, there is a rapid premiumization which is taking place. So it gives them big headroom for growth. So mass and premium cars are expected to grow at a CAGR of around 8 to 10 percent and luxury to around 14 to 15 percent, 16 percent. So roughly at double the rate is the luxury cars expected to grow in India. Uh, what they do, they do, they are across all automobile value chain, new vehicle sales, premium and luxury uh, passenger vehicles, electric vehicles, commercial vehicles, after sales service and spare parts, customer paid service, warranty, accessories, collision and repair services, pre-owned passenger vehicle sales, uh, sale of them, offer some brand sales at cross-selling and upselling initiative. So they resell better cars and all those issues to the customers. Vehicle finance and insurance also they are there. And car care business, all the exterior paint protection, interior protection, paint protection, film, headlamp, genuine accessories, uh, etc. Now, uh, so basically, they are clearly established in the premium segment for the last 25 years. So it's not a new business. And this is the main reason because premium segment is expected to grow faster than the industry. And since they have a long operational legacy, it is a partner of choice for all OEMs which want to expand business in India or anybody coming from outside to expand business in India. They are the first choice. Uh, luxury segment, as I showed you, is expected to grow at 2x the uh, personal uh, vehicle industry. After sales and spare part segment is available at every dealership, so which is good. Their dealership, uh, although their, their uh, dealership stores are very nicely screwed up. Uh, they are scaling up the pre-owned car segment and into third-party finance and insurance product sales also. 77% of revenues are from sale of new cars and 20% from after-sales service, 2% by pre-owned cars and 1% by finance and insurance. In most geographies, uh, Landmark Cars is the only partner for a particular brand for that particular town. So there is hardly any competition. Now, if you see their chart, now uh, it has gone to around 850 or levels and uh, there uh, it is taking somewhere support at around 20 MA. But in my opinion, if you can have a little bit longer uh, uh, horizon, then every dip from here closer to 50 MA based on the results and all those issues, because these are very cyclical businesses. Uh, some quarters are good. Some quarters may not be that good and all that depending on sales of cars and other issues. But uh, this is, if you see the ba basic theme of premiumization, which is working in India right now, this should be a clear proxy for that. Uh, Angel one, uh, uh, this in again, I have uh, taken it up because I wanted to really understand the broking business. 
because again uh, this is the biggest uh, again where there is so much of interest in equities nowadays so among all the listed uh, broker uh, brokerages this is the biggest one so that is the reason why i wanted to understand what is the way this business is working right now now this quarter they had a sequential decline in gross broking revenue but it was also because they had a rise in share of cash segment but subdued derivative segment so the total order volume was uh, 350 million up by 3.6% q on q and 55% year on year where the fno volume was at 262 million down minus 0.8% q on q but up 52% year on year so you can see very clearly that where the interest is nowadays uh company's market share in fno has risen from 26.2% to 26.9% on sequential basis uh the total clients client base stood at 19.5 million that is around 2 crore clients it is up q and q in year on year and nse active client base was also up roughly 8.2 and 26.2% q and q in year on year average client funding book was at rupees 1859 crore up by 32% q and q now this is all that uh, margin money which they are funding and this is the real source of income for such companies right now operating profit margins for the quarter at 43.9% was down uh, roughly 7.3% uh, q and q uh, and 9.12% year on year so this quarter was bad and that's why the stock is corrected uh, in fy uh, this quarter in q2 fy24 the company has revised its tariff for intraday cash segment from 0.25% of rupees 20 per order whichever is lower to 0.03% or rupees 20 per order whichever is low so the small minor change they have done the revenue decline so this is also one of the reason is all because of share of flat fee clients has moved up compared with traditional clients so people are looking at 20 rupees per order kind of trades more people and operating expenses were up 21% so that led to lower margins and uh, lower profits due to client acquisition costs uh gross broking revenue is 67% of the total revenue and share of fno is 84% of the gross broking revenue so you can see share of fno is 84% and that is what is uh, driving the profits nowadays now if you see uh, their results Uh, the revenues were flat though they had improved uh, in q3 they were flat as compared to q2 but they had improved year on year uh, net revenue is improved but really flat q and q employee cost have gone up slightly other expenses have also gone up uh, total operating expenses went up so operating profit dripped now operating profit margins also dipped as i brought out other income depreciation etc so the pat profit after tax trip to around 260 crores from 304 crores and it was up q uh, year on year now if you see the expectations financial summary net revenue is expected to be around uh, uh, 3534 crores uh, in fy25 from around 2900 crores uh in uh, this year this financial year year on year growth of around 20% operating profit is expected to grow around 40 40% 40%, 47 48% 40%. and pat growth is expected to be around 30 to 30 22% roe is also expected to be in higher high 30s eps so if you see here it is expected to have a eps of 150 rupees and with the kind of growth they are showing in profits so the pe is uh, is pretty less right now so if you see if you see the pe to g it is below uh, 1 also right now because if they are expect you are expecting a growth of 31% and the pe is 22 for fi25 so pg is around 0.6 uh, book value and price to book is uh, decent right now now if you see here 
uh, key business parameters, client base is improving. Gross client acquisition is improved, is up, and it is year on year it is very good. Uh, active clients is improving. Order volumes have gone up. Average daily tenure is up. Twenty uh, percent quarter and quarter, and one hundred fifty percent year on year. Uh, so flat fees, client funding book size, as I brought out, is imp is uh, gone up, and it has gone up forty four percent on. Uh, this thing as more interest is there more people want to trade more so they are taking more margin calls uh, they are into this sip business also so that has also improved and uh, so if you see their revenue max uh, gross broking revenue is now lower to so 67% interest is higher uh, depository distribution uh, this was this is their basic uh, revenue mix and fno out of the gross broking is 84%, cash is 11 and commodity is 5 and currency is 0 right now. And direct channel and assisted business is 76 and 23%. So uh, that is there. Uh, the ratios, if you see, they had a fantastic growth earlier, but now it is likely to stabilize around 20%. Uh, operating profit, net profit, etc. Uh, margins are going to be going down because as the volumes of operations go up, uh, the margins will decline. ROE is also expected to be around 40%. They are paying dividend, uh, PAT margins, etc. decent. EPS is, as I brought out, expected to be around the 147. So even if it is 140, it is not very expensive for FY25. And PE, let's see the chart. Now, what happened here was, uh, I think few of the uh, PMSs have been buying this stock and that led to the uh, rise in the stock's valuation from 2000 odd levels uh, to some, suddenly 3800 levels because there were a lot of interest and people were coming openly in television and telling about that they're buying this angel one and all that. And now once the result has come, it has dipped below the uh, 20 EMA also and now taking support at 50 EMA. So uh, I think closer to uh, 3000 odd should be an in interesting level to get into this stock. The only problem is that the all this broking business is directly is got direct correlation with the interest in the equity markets and how the equity markets perform. So moment the equity markets stop performing, the interest dies on very quickly. Hence, this becomes a kind of a cyclical business. So one has to be careful because these all these expectations of uh, earnings of next few years and all that can go down very uh, in a very big way moment there is a lesser interest in the equity market. But it is one segment which is uh, which is likely to do well in case the interest in equities persist. I have finished. Uh, we'll take some questions now.